sweet friends! In case you're new around here, my name is Megan and since it's officially autumn and I'm so excited, I thought it'd be fun to crochet pumpkins because every single year I'm like, I'm gonna crochet pumpkins and the next thing I know, it's January and I've still never crocheted a pumpkin in my entire life and I just feel like that's a problem I need to fix this year. I was looking up crochet patterns like on Pinterest thinking that making a pumpkin would be just super quick and easy but y'all get really fancy with your pumpkins and I just currently don't have the brain capacity for anything fancy or complicated so we're just gonna wing it today and I'm sure the pumpkins are still gonna turn out super adorable. So first things first I think we should go to the yarn store together just because I haven't been yarn shopping in a really long time and any excuse to go to the yarn store always sounds like a good idea to me. So we'll go pick out some cute yarn for our pumpkins. We'll come back here and then I will figure out a way easy way that we can make pumpkins and then I'll share the little tutorial here with you. So let's go shopping. First stop was to Dutch Bros because getting a pumpkin drink when I'm about to crochet pumpkins just sounded like fun. I got distracted by this super pretty yarn while I was at the store. I definitely want to come back soon for this because how gorgeous is this color? I haven't had a chance to play with velvet yarn yet but I really really want to. It's on my to-do list, but I didn't know how it would look with pumpkins, so I showed a little bit of self-control. <laughs> I saw a bunch of yarn that I liked at Michael's, but I didn't see any sales, so my hubby is such a sweetheart, and he drove us to Joann's instead, which was a great idea because not only was their yarn on sale, but I was able to use a coupon on top of the sale prices, so it just felt like a huge win. I had so much fun yarn shopping. I got three skeins of Woolies Thick and Quick because it's just my favorite yarn to use. And I thought that these colors looked so pretty for fall. I've got this beautiful butterscotch color, falling leaves, and then <laughs> I'm not like a huge orange, orange person. Burnt orange, yes. Straight orange, no. But my husband's like, you can't make pumpkins without getting a yarn that's literally called where is it? It's literally called pumpkin. So, <laughs> Plus with these three, or these four together, I thought it looked really pretty. And then I just couldn't walk away from this one. I just thought it was so, so pretty. Burnett, Forever Fleece Tweeds. I love all the different speckles of color. I just thought it was so, so beautiful. And this one's called Rose Hip Tweed. And then white pumpkins, or cream pumpkins, always seem so pretty. So I figured I'd just use <laughs> some of my own stash for those. And this cream yarn is also the Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick in the color Fisherman. And then I had a hard time finding cinnamon sticks. I asked both Michaels and Joann's. Neither of them. They looked at me like I was just weird for even asking. <laughs> so Walmart, more cinnamon sticks than I could ever need, but it's literally the only thing I could find. It was like $10, but I guess I'm set for life. As many pumpkins as I could ever want to crochet and then I don't know if this is twine. If I saw like twine on top of pumpkins I thought this would be cute. Hello sweet friends happy Tuesday. So as you can see I have finally <laughs> crocheted my very first pumpkin. This was the very first one that I ever made and I think it turned out so stinking cute. I'm way way happy with the design. These were so easy to throw together. They were just the perfect project to work on at night after you get the kids to bed I made this adorable little miniature version <laughs> I'm just dying over the cuteness isn't that so sweet it's so tiny and then I don't know if you'd really call this a large pumpkin but this is as big as we got here so far now that I kind of know what I'm doing I'm going to share a little tutorial with you and then I'm gonna have fun using all that cute yarn that I bought at the yarn store make just a whole bunch of pumpkins. Apparently, once you start making pumpkins, you can't stop and you're just gonna have like a million in your house like me. But a good thing is, I've got like a million cinnamon sticks, so we're ready to make all the pumpkins. <laughs> Before we get started on the tutorial, here's the stitch and row count for each of these three different pumpkin sizes, just in case you were curious. If you want to learn how to make these little pumpkins, here's a quick tutorial. 
First, make a slip knot and leave your tail just a few inches long so that it's easy to weave in later. Next, grab a crochet hook. I'm using an eight millimeter size hook here. Make a chain of 15 if you're making the small size pumpkin like I am, or whatever number of chains that you'd like. This pattern is super customizable. Once you've got your chain as long as you'd like, you are going to half double crochet into the second chain from your hook. So normally this is your first chain, and this is your second, and you'd go through this space right here. But what I like to do is flip my chain over and crochet through these back bumps here instead. I think it makes for a cleaner edge and just looks super nice. So here's my first half double crochet. I have a little tutorial video explaining all this better and I'll be sure to link it below if you'd like to check it out. But all that really matters here is that you're half double crocheting into the second chain from your hook and half double crocheting into each chain all the way across. So feel free to half double crochet across however is most comfortable for you. Make sure to go all the way into that very last chain. And once you've made it to the end of the row, you should have 14 half double crochets if you started with a chain of 15. Now make a chain one, turn your work, and now we're going to work through the back loops of these stitches. You can see there's a front loop on top here and a back loop, and we're going to work our hook just underneath the back loop. So yarn over, go down in between those loops so that you're only working through the back loop here. And then yarn over again, pull through the loop. You'll now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops and there's your first half double crochet in the back loop. In the very next stitch, repeat the same process of going down in between the loops so your hook only works through the back loop and make a half double crochet. If you need a better tutorial video for half double crocheting in the back loop, I actually have one on my YouTube channel here if you'd like to check it out. I'll have it linked for you below. But half double crochet in the back loop only all the way across, making sure to go all the way into that very last stitch. Here's how things should look so far. You should have this nice little ridge going across. Make a chain one, turn your work, and same as before, we are going to work only through the back loops, placing half double crochets in each stitch all the way across. And then for each new row of this pumpkin, repeat the same exact process. This whole thing is just half double crochet in the back loop only, all the way across for every single row. It's super easy. Always make sure to go into that very last stitch of each row. It can be a little bit tricky to see. If you're having a hard time knowing which stitch exactly is the last stitch of each row, and you don't want to have to constantly count just to make sure you have the correct number of stitches, what you can do is grab two stitch markers, one for each side of your work, and then every time you place that first half double crochet of the row, go ahead and grab your stitch marker and slide it underneath the top two loops here just like this. And then repeat this process on the other side when you start a new row, and then that way your side edge stitches are always marked and you won't have to guess where to end the row anymore. You'll just crochet across until you run into a stitch marker and then just move the stitch marker up for each new row as you go. If you need more information about using stitch markers to keep the edge of your crochet project straight, I'll have a tutorial video I made linked for you below. But to finish making the body of your pumpkin, just keep half double crocheting through the back loops of each new row for 24 rows if you're making a small size pumpkin like I am. These pumpkins are super customizable though, so half double crochet in the back loop only for as many rows as you'd like. I'll be doing 24 rows here. Once you've placed your last stitch, make a chain one. And like I mentioned, you can make as many rows as you'd like here, but it's good to aim for making it about twice or maybe even three times as long as the width. I just crochet until it's looking more like a rectangle than a square, and I also like to have an even amount of rows. And now fold these two sides together so that your first and last row are touching right on the side here and your project starts to form a tube. And let's seam these two edges together. To keep it easy, I've just been using slip stitches to do that. You can see that there's a back loop and a front loop here. So what I like to do is take my crochet hook and slide it right here underneath just the front loop like this. 
and then I look at the stitch that lines up on the opposite side and I work my hook down through it only through the back loop and then make a slip stitch to join the sides together going through the front loop on this side since it's right on the outside edge here And then on the opposite side, right through this outer loop here, the back loop. And then make a slip stitch. To make it easier maybe, if you look at the top of your half double crochet here, we're working our hook underneath just this loop on the top here. I've just noticed that only working through these two loops here helps make the join a bit more seamless. Make sure to go all the way to this very last stitch on the side edge here. And here's what the last stitch looks like on this side. Work only through the one loop on each side and make a slip stitch. And then make a chain one and pull on the loop to help make a little knot, but don't cut anything just yet. Here's how things should look when you're all finished. The slip stitch method helps it look so much more seamless. It gives a little ridge here that kind of matches your half double crochet in the back loop ridges, and I just think it looks so freaking good. Now you're gonna want to cut a super long tail of yarn here. I always like to have about four or five feet, and you can see that I'm probably being way too generous with my measuring, but I'd always rather have way too much yarn than deal with not having enough later. Once you have enough, cut your yarn and then find that loop and pull your yarn all the way through that loop. It's gonna form a little knot for you. And then tighten the knot. And then it's probably not necessary, but I always like to tie a knot between these two tails of yarn because I feel like it finishes pulling the edges together and just helps make things a bit more secure. Now we're ready to weave in the small tail of yarn. So grab a darning needle. And I honestly just weave down through several stitches. And then I just thread the tail down through to what will be the inside of my pumpkin and call it good. You can totally weave things in better if you'd like, but I'm not too worried about it. So grab your darning needle again, and this time thread it onto your long tail of yarn. And now we're gonna close up this opening on the top here. To do that, all you're going to do is thread your yarn back and forth through these top loops here, all the way around, and it makes almost like a drawstring bag. Don't worry about pulling your yarn too tight just yet, just focus on threading the needle back and forth. I later discovered that it seems to work a little better here if you only work your needle through a single loop on this edge here. I'll show it a little later on in this video, but aim for just trying to go through one loop on this side here. It just helps things close up a little bit easier. We're back at the beginning now. I can tell because I never pulled my yarn too tight because I was too lazy and it left a little loop. So just go ahead and pull on your yarn and this edge of your pumpkin will start to close. And depending on how big your pumpkin is, no matter how tight you pull your yarn, there might still be a hole here. So just pull it as tight as you can and don't worry because you can take your needle and continue to thread your yarn through those same loops you're threading through before and it will help close up that gap. See what a difference it's making? So much better. So continue to thread through these loops for as many times as you need until that hole completely disappears. Now that the hole is gone, we are gonna thread through in the opposite direction. So I've been working my needle around counterclockwise this whole time, so I'm gonna work clockwise. So take your needle, you're gonna skip the loop that your yarn is directly coming out of, and instead go over this way in the opposite direction, being sure to skip a loop so that it holds your yarn in place. 
can thread through as many times as you like and this is going to help hold your yarn in place so that the hole stays securely closed. I always like to be extra cautious, so I'm also going to tie a knot here. So I find a loop close by to thread my needle through. And then I pull until I have a little loop. And then pass my needle through the loop and then pull until it ties a little knot. And then just pass your needle through that little hole into the bottom of your pumpkin and down through the inside. And now your pumpkin should start to look like a little bowl and you can start to add your stuffing. Add as much as you'd like. I like my pumpkins pretty full, so I feel like I kind of add a lot of stuffing, but just be aware that the more stuffing you add, the more likely it might be seen through the stitches of your pumpkin when it's all finished. I haven't had much of a problem with that at all, but I just wanted to mention it in case it would be helpful. Once you're happy with your stuffed pumpkin, we are going to make a drawstring on this side of the pumpkin, so grab your needle, and same as before, you are going to thread back and forth through the top loops of your pumpkin. Now that we're back to where we first started, go ahead and pull on the string until that top closes. But with the top of your pumpkin, you don't want the hole to be completely closed. You wanna leave a little bit of space because you'll be adding a cinnamon stick to act as the stem of your pumpkin. So let's work our way around through these top loops again, the same as before, just to help close up the gap a little bit more. I like to keep my finger in place here while I'm pulling the yarn closed so that it leaves a little space for the cinnamon stick and it prevents the hole from ever accidentally closing completely. Here's how things should look. You can see there's a little room to add a cinnamon stick right here. To help secure the yarn in place, same as before, I'm going to thread my needle in the opposite direction. So this is the last stitch I threaded through. So I'm going to skip this stitch because it's going to hold my yarn in place while I thread my needle in the opposite direction. Once you feel like things are pretty secure, go ahead and add a knot if you'd like. Same as before, I just threaded my needle through an extra stitch, pulled until my yarn formed a loop, threaded my needle through the loop, and then pulled to tighten the knot. Now that we've got this adorable pumpkin shape, I like to add some extra grooves down the side here. But real quick, I don't like seeing this knot on the top, so I'm going to thread through a couple of extra stitches just to try to hide it. Okay, so to add extra ridges, I like to go between the half double crochet and the back loop ridges. And you can see how just pulling on the yarn here helps put a groove in your pumpkin. So I'm going to go to the bottom of my pumpkin here and find a few loops to thread through to help hold this yarn in place. Pull the yarn as tight as you'd like. For this small size of pumpkin, I like to have two half double crochet in the back loop ridges between each groove. So once I've got those two in between, I just work my yarn back up to the top of my pumpkin. and then thread through a few of these top loops to help hold the yarn in place. And try to have your needle end up about in the same area that you'd want to place the next groove of your pumpkin. And then work your yarn back down and find some loops at the bottom of your pumpkin to thread through to help hold the yarn in place. And you can see that the pumpkin shape is starting to form. Repeat this process all the way around, adding grooves wherever you think it would look cute on your pumpkin. Here's our last groove.
And there's the finished pumpkin. Isn't that so cute? Oh, these make my heart so happy. To secure the yarn in place, just weave through a few extra stitches on the top and then thread through a loop close by that you can make a knot with. Just to be extra safe, I weaved through a few stitches in the opposite direction too, plus this helped hide the knot. To weave in the loose end here, I've just been weaving down through a few stitches on the side of my pumpkin. You can pass through as many stitches as you'd like. Once you feel like it's weaved in enough, I just like to pass through the inside of my pumpkin and thread the needle down through the bottom, just so that the loose end is inside the pumpkin and isn't gonna go anywhere. And then just take your scissors and cut the extra yarn here. And then grab your cinnamon sticks and find one that you like. And easy peasy, just place it in the top of your pumpkin. There's the finished cutie pumpkin. If you'd like to add an extra finishing touch, you can go ahead and grab some twine or some string or some yarn that you'd like. I'm not sure what exactly I'm using here. I think the package said it was hemp or something. I don't know. I thought it was twine. I don't know if it's even twine, but it looks cute, so I'm using it. So just go ahead and tie that around the stem of your pumpkin and then make a bow. And then just cut away the extra string as short as you'd like. Here's the finished pumpkin. Oh, I just love it so, so much. I think adding that little bow on the top is just the sweetest little finishing touch. It makes such a big difference. I know it's kind of silly, but today's my half birthday. <laughs> I'm really excited. I am officially 33 and a half years old and I'm feeling really good about it. Does anyone else celebrate half birthdays? I don't totally like celebrate them, but usually I'll go get a fun tree, a fun coffee or a cookie or a cupcake or something. Just make the day a little bit more special and fun. Any reason to celebrate, am I right? I had an aunt growing up that always celebrated half birthdays and I just thought that sounded so fun. And I remember being a little kid and her helping me figure out what day was my half birthday and I remembered it ever since. I got started on this pumpkin yarn version of my next pumpkin. The color is called pumpkin in case you don't know what I'm talking about right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna finish this up and make more pumpkins out of the fun different colors. So let's go do that. looking so cute. My husband was so right. We needed an orange pumpkin. What was I thinking? It looks so good. I love these so much. So cute. So I forgot to mention this before. Part of the reason that I'm using a eight millimeter hook here is because this yarn that I'm using typically requires or recommends a size N hook, a nine millimeter. And I figured if I used a smaller hook, 
you would be less likely to be able to see the stuffing popping out from between the stitches. So my husband's a sweetie and he just came in and wished me a happy half birthday and said, let's go get some Dutch Bros. So we're gonna go get those pumpkin spice drinks from Dutch Bros. I'm gonna do some car crocheting and yeah, it's gonna be fun. In case you didn't know, this video is not sponsored. If Dutch Bros ever wants to sponsor me, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> But Dutch Rose has an app and they also celebrate half birthdays. I just think that's so cute. So I get a half off drink today. After making a couple more pumpkins, I've decided it's a way better idea when you're like doing the drawstring thing around to go through only one loop. It just makes everything come together so much better. Before I was going like deeper down in the stitches here. So yeah, don't do that. Just try, <laughs> try to hang out on the top here. makes a big difference. I don't know if you can see it. I'm only going through like a top little loop there. I don't know if you can see a difference, especially in this lighting, but you can just see all the little loops so much easier so that when you're trying to thread your needle around uh, it just makes it a lot easier so just like definite loops to work through that looks good I'm super excited. I saved this beautiful pink yarn for last just because I've never worked with it before and I'm the most excited about this one. Is a pink pumpkin crazy? I don't know. Like how beautiful is this yarn? I'm just so in love. I also want to make baskets out of this one. Wouldn't that be pretty? Some cute little baskets with this yarn? Maybe. I don't know how sturdy they'd be. Because this is it's polyester and nylon. And I usually like wool and acrylic for baskets. Anyways, we're getting off topic. Let's go make pumpkins. This yarn's a little bit weird. I don't think I've seen yarn unravel like that. And that might be pretty for like fringe though, on a blanket. Cause then it wouldn't look like a yarn strand at all. It'd just be like these pretty little threads. I don't know, just random thoughts <laughs> while I'm using this brand new yarn. I really, really like it though. It's super, super soft. I don't know if I'd recommend it for beginners because the stitch definition, it wasn't always the easiest to see where my stitches were, but I've been crocheting for like a decade, so I was all right, but I just think a beginners might struggle a little bit with it. It's not too bad though, and it's super pretty. Just takes some getting used to.
so cute. As much as I absolutely love this yarn, it's so beautiful and incredibly soft. I just can't help but think that the Lion brand Wooly's Thick and Quick Pumpkins look better just because the stitches are more defined. What do you guys think? What's your favorite pumpkin so far? I think I want to make just a couple more mini pumpkins today, at least one more because I want to try out something a little bit different. I'll show you in just a second. I was just curious about something. So the last time I made mini pumpkins, I just wrapped the yarn around to the bottom and then since they were so small, I just took my needle and poked it down through the bottom and out through the middle. Hopefully you can see that. But I noticed that it like really squished them flat like a pancake when I did that. So if you like that look, if you like this look here, that's how to make that happen. But I just want to see if they'll be a little bit more round if I do it the way I did it. I've been doing it on all the other pumpkins. Also, another option that I tried on my very first pumpkin was I wrapped it all the way around and then threaded just through the top stitches and then that way it does two ridges at once. But I don't totally love the look of that because I can show you on my original very first pumpkin, I didn't love having a whole bunch of yarn crisscrossing on the bottom, even though nobody really looks at it. <laughs> no one's gonna look at the bottom of your pumpkin. So if you wanna do it this way, that's totally an option. Cuts down on time, way less threading. Another reason why I personally don't like to do that is because I didn't totally have control. I mean, I just wasn't paying attention over where exactly the yarn was being placed and sometimes Instead of being between the ridges of the half double crochet stitches, it went on top and I didn't love that. So this time around, I'm going to try to make a mini pumpkin just with that same method I've been doing before. Got to decide where exactly I want this yarn to fall. Oh, I don't love that. Let me go back. So I'd like it to be between the stitches. Is that kind of what I did here? No, but I tried to have five so that it looked kind of like a flower. All right, let's figure this out. So maybe instead of worrying where the stitches or where the ridges fall this time, I will just aim for trying to make five. Oh, before I do that though, another reason why I don't love the threading through the bottom method is because it doesn't work like maybe if you get a longer needle it doesn't work with the two other size pumpkins that I was making it doesn't work with those those small pumpkins are just my favorite to make I just haven't totally figured out how I like the mini pumpkin ridges so the small one just works out perfect I think that should work that should be cute okay so about halfway between should be right about there did it make a huge difference oh it did that's a lot better this is still really cute i like this style too i was just curious if it'd make it more round i tried the other way cool so with the mini pumpkins a regular cinnamon stick was way too big I mean, I guess that's not too bad, but I took one of these and I just broke it in half for this little pumpkin. So I'm just gonna use this other piece that I have that's already broken. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so cute. Isn't that adorable? These two pumpkins, same exact yarn, just different colors. 
same exact hook, uh, same exact stitches, but you can see there is a definite size difference just from not weaving the yarn from the top all the way up through the bottom and going around that way. I hope that makes sense. You just watch me do it. You know what I'm talking about. Yay, this is so cute. And then to add a little bow. Also, I never usually tie bows like this, like an overhand knot. And it might all be in my head, but I feel like it makes for a prettier bow on these pumpkins. I don't know. I did it one time and I was like, oh, I like that better. And now I just do it every time. So. Ta da! It's getting kind of late, so. I think I'm gonna stop crocheting for today, but aren't these so, so cute? Also, I used a super bulky weight yarn for these pumpkins just because the stitches just work up so quickly and I just love super bulky weight yarn. It's kind of my favorite, but you could totally customize the heck out of this pattern and use worsted weight yarn and I think it'd make for a really pretty pumpkin too. Maybe I'll try that next year. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today while we crocheted pumpkins. I just had the absolute best day and I can't think of a better way to spend your half birthday than crocheting all day long. It was lovely. <laughs> lovely nice day. If you liked this video, it would make my whole day. If you tap that like button below, it just gives me great feedback to know what kind of videos you'd like to see from me in the future, and it helps out my channel a lot. So, thank you so much in advance. But more than anything, just thank you so much for watching. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video.